Hey guys, I'm Josh Kramer. You can follow me on Instagram at Josh Kramer Yoga. I'm here in Beverly Hills at the Allo Flagship Store, about to do a 45 minute power vinyasa flow that's really gonna focus on the outer hips and the core. So hit that subscribe button and make sure you come back again to do some awesome yoga classes with us next time. For this 45 minute class, you'll need a strap or something similar like a towel and possibly two blocks or a book or water bottle, something that'll help you if you have tighter hamstrings. So to start, let's begin in Uttanasana at the front of the mat with our feet, hips distance apart, gently folding forward. Keep a slight bend in the knees to begin with while we let our hamstrings start to open, allowing the weight of your head and upper body to melt down towards the mat. Start to focus on the breath and ease yourself into the class, into the moment, becoming present on the mat. Maybe rocking side to side, whatever feels good to you. If you like, you can start to straighten the legs as the hamstrings open and become more receptive. Today's class is 45 minutes, so it's quite quick. We're going to be focusing on the outer hips, a bit of hamstring work. We're going to move quite quickly today. 45 minutes is not much time, so we'll concentrate m more on the bulk of the class rather than the warm-ups and cool-downs. Take any modifications you need. If you need child's pose, feel free to take that and then meet us back. Deep in the inhales, slow the exhales. Maybe start to lengthen the crown of the head down to the mat, pulsing forward to open the hamstrings even more. Lift the kneecaps to engage the quadriceps and protect the knees. From here, take a slight bend in the left leg, place the left hand down, inhale the right arm to the sky, turning from the torso for a gentle twist, lengthen the crown of the head forward. On an inhale, draw the shoulder back and the left shoulder forward, twisting even more. Exhale, release that down, take a slight bend in the right knee, Place the right hand down and inhale the left hand to the ceiling. Inhale. Exhale, twist. One more breath here. Inhale the left shoulder back as you twist the right shoulder forward, opening the torso. Exhale, release that down, folding forward Uttanasana. Inhale halfway on the fingertips. Start to heel toe the feet so that they're about mat's distance apart. You can have the edge of the mat dissecting the feet and start to sink the hips down coming into a wide squat keep the knees hovering directly over the ankles extend the hands forward sort of a wide yogi squat your shins perpendicular to the ground your thighs parallel to the ground reach forward extend forward we'll be here for a few breaths start to feel that burn in the quads waking them up maybe moving side to side One more breath here, deep inhale through the nose, reach through the arms. Exhale, press into the feet to stand and heel toe your feet even wider for a nice wide forward fold. Exhale, release the crown of the head down. If your hamstrings are still tight, maybe don't take this as deep to begin with or use those blocks if you have them handy. Inhale, lengthen the crown of the head forward. Exhale, fold forward if you like, reach the hands forward like a wide stance down dog. Inhale, bring the left hand directly underneath your chest. Inhale, the right arm to the sky. Wide legged twist. Inhale, draw the right shoulder back, left shoulder forward, lengthen the crown of the head forward. Exhale, release the right hand down. And inhale the left arm to the sky. Exhale, draw the left shoulder back even more. Keep that length and extension in the spine by actively sending your sit bones back and the crown of your head forward. 
Exhale, release the hands down to the mat. Inhale, halfway. Heel toe the feet in, about hips distance apart again. And from here, we're going to bend into the knees, step the left leg back into a, a runner's lunge. Actively work that left leg, lifting the kneecap, and then lower the knee down to the mat, untuck the toes, coming up into a low lunge or kapiyasana. Clasp the hands behind your back. Start to sink down into the stretch, drawing the right buttock towards the right heel, stretching into the left hip flexor. Add in some dynamic movement here, so pulsing forward and back, finding that tight area and working into it. Keep the shoulder blades drawing back and down together as you lift the sternum up. Open the chest, open the shoulders. This is a chance for you to move in an, in an intuitive way, a way that feels natural to you. One more breath here. Lift the shoulders back and down if you can. Even more, send the chest up. Find the maximum depth of the pose for one last little stretch. And release the hands to the inside of the right foot. Heel toe the foot to the outer edge of the mat, coming down into a wide lizard lunge. Maybe make your way down onto your forearms if that's accessible to you. If you like, roll onto the outer edge of the right foot, bringing your right hand to the right knee, sinking the hips down. We'll be doing a lot of focus on the outer hips in this class. So use this as an opportunity to open up into those areas before we fully commit to some intense poses. Dynamic movement, pulse the hips up and down. That feels good to you. A couple breaths here. Plant the hands back down, make your way up into that lunge again, lift the back knee off the mat, press firmly into the hands, step the right foot back to meet the left in plank pose. Shoulders directly above the wrists, protract the shoulder blades by pressing the ground away, lift the hips up, light on the toes. Nice work. From here, we're going to just hold this plank pose for a few breaths, starting to activate the core. Wake the core up, wake the shoulders up. If you like, you can add some back and forward movement. Sometimes it helps to escape that static nature of plank pose. But, you know, that's what makes it challenging. It becomes a mental pose rather than a physical posture. One more breath. From here, bring your left knee in towards your nose, step the foot between the hands, find that runner's lunge again, really work the back leg, and then lower the right knee down to the mat, coming up into Kapiyasana on the opposite side. Clasp the hands behind your back, opposite interlace of the fingers, and sink into the depth of the posture. Draw the shoulder blades back and down, the sternum towards the ceiling. Dynamic movement here. You should be feeling the stretch into your, into your right hip flexor. Maybe the left psoas. Everybody's different, so you're going to feel this in a different place, depending on where you're tight or where you're flexible. Find the depth, the maximum depth of the stretch. Lift the chest a little bit more. Sink a little bit deeper. And release the hands to the inside of the left foot. Heel toe the left foot to the outer edge of the mat. Making your way down into that lizard lunge. Coming onto the forearms. Rolling onto the outer edge of the left foot. Sinking the hips down. Bring the left hand to the left knee if that's accessible to you. You can keep the back toes tucked under if that's more comfortable for you. I like to add dynamic movement into these warm-up stretches. It really helps to understand your body and to start to feel the tight areas so that when we move into the more complex and high-paced movements, you're more in touch with your body and you're less likely to injure yourself. Plant the hands down, roll onto the 
sole of the foot again, step back into plank pose. This time we're going to add in some shoulder taps. So bring the weight into the right hand and left hand to left shoulder, place it down, right hand to right shoulder. We'll be here for about 30 seconds. Work with your own breath here. Try and keep as little movement in the hips as possible. We want to avoid this hip swaying. So find stability, push the ground away, and keep going. Connect with your breath. Five, four, three, two, one. Send the hips up and back for our first downward facing dog of the class. Deep inhale through the nose. Exhale. If you want to pedal your feet out, feel free to do that now. Move in a natural way. Find those tight areas in your body. Look for them, locate them, and then stretch them out. If you can't stretch them out, just be aware of them and take note of that for later. Once you've scanned through your body, start to find stillness. Finding that place in down dog where you're working but not overexerting yourself. So the kneecaps lift up to engage the quadriceps, the heels move down towards the mat, and the chest moves towards the thighs as you press firmly into the index finger and thumb and spread all the other fingers out from there. From here we're going to make our way through four sun salutations, focusing on your breath, controlling the movement. Gaze forward, bend the knees, step or jump to the front of your mat, folding forward Uttanasana. Inhale, rise, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Tadasana. So, four rounds. Work to your own ability. If that means playing with handstand, pro to handstand, or just stepping back, have fun with it. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, make your way back through your vinyasa, floating back. Maybe flying back, whatever you like. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Reset here. Gaze forward. Make your way to the front of the mat, whether that's stepping, jumping, floating, flying. Forward fold Uttanasana. Exhale, fold Uttanasana one more time. Inhale, rise, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Tadasana. Moving a little bit faster now. Inhale, rise. Exhale, folding forward Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, step, jump, float back. I'm going to step back this time. Make your way through your vinyasa. Upward facing dog. Exhale, the hips up and back. Downward facing dog. Immediately try and find the integrity of your downward facing dog. Don't waste time by searching for that. You've already found it when we were warming up. Gaze forward, bend the knees. Step or jump to the front of the mat. Fold Uttanasana. Inhale, rise, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Tadasana. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Tadasana, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, make your way through your vinyasa, through crow pose if you like. Find your way into upward facing dog. Draw the shoulders back and down. Send the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Gaze forward, bend the knees, step, jump, float, fly to the front of the mat. Exhale. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Tadasana. Last round. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Uttanasana, folding forward. 
Inhale, halfway. Exhale, step, jump, float, fly your way back through your last vinyasa. Upward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Reset here. If you need child's pose, take that now or join us back. We're going to start moving through our sequence. From down dog, inhale the right leg into the sky. Exhale, shift forward, bring the right knee into the right tricep. Lifting as high into the armpit as you can. Inhale it back up. Exhale, right knee to right tricep. Inhale, back up. Exhale, right knee to right tricep. One more time. Inhale, right leg high. Light on the back toes. Exhale, knee to nose this time. Step the foot between the hands. Drop the back foot down to 45 degrees. Inhale, coming up into our first warrior one. So, this first warrior one often feels quite tight, at least it does for me. So I like to use this as an explorative pose, just like that first down dog, dynamically moving into the stretch, maybe clasping the hands behind your back as you sink deeper down into the stretch. Draw the left hip forward as you pull the right hip back. Couple breaths here, dynamically bouncing into that front hip. Press firmly into the outer edge of the left foot as you draw the left hip forward. One breath, lift the chest, draw the shoulders back and down. Exhale, release the hands, square the front foot. Step back, make your way through a vinyasa. If you like, add in a little handstand play. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg high into the sky. Exhale, shift forward. Left knee to left tricep. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, left knee, left tricep. One more. Inhale, left knee. Comes forward, left tricep. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, knee to nose this time as you step the left foot between the hand. Drop the back foot down. 45 degrees. Before you even come up, think of firmly pressing the outer edge of the right foot down. Warrior one. Readjust. Immediately working into that right hip. Clasp the hands behind if you like. Open the chest. One. More deep breath here. On your next exhale, release the hands down. Frame the front foot, make your way through your vinyasa. If you want your handstand, now's your chance to have a play. Reset and we'll meet in downward facing dog. Let's start adding on to that sequence. This is where you might need your block or your water bottle. Maybe a book. Something to put your hands on while you're balancing. From down dog, inhale the right leg into the sky. Exhale, shift forward. Right knee to right tricep. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, knee to tricep. One more time, inhale. Right knee, right tricep. Inhale one more time up into the sky. Exhale, knee to nose this time. Step the foot between the hand. Drop the back foot down 45 degrees. Coming up into warrior one. Should feel a lot more open this time round. We're going to take this first side a bit slower. Focusing on alignment and integrity in the posture. So, from warrior one, straighten that front leg. Bring your arms out to the side like wings. The hips should be facing directly forward. Take an inhale, lift the chest. On an exhale, bring your left hand to the outside of the right foot, opening the torso for revolved triangle pose. Parvita Trikonasana. Draw the right shoulder back as you draw the left shoulder forward. Think of that twist we did at the, front, at the start of the class. Press firmly into the outer edge of the left foot. Lift the kneecaps of both legs. 
to engage the quads. One more breath here. Exhale, draw the right hip back even more. Gaze forward. Start to bend into that right knee as you reach forward with the left hand, pressing yourself up, coming into revolved half moon. Back leg active, so actively flex the left foot, lift the kneecap of the left leg, drawing that right shoulder back, left shoulder forward. Work the standing leg now, right kneecap lifting. Nice work, yogis. Okay, so this little movement here is going to be a bit challenging. Maybe you fall, but you just get back up and join us. So, start to bend into that right knee, and in one movement, pivoting forward, grabbing the outer edge of your left foot, coming into revolved hand to foot. Kneecap of the right leg, lifting to create stability. Open the left side of the chest, draw the right shoulder forward, one breath here, nice and slow movement with control. When you let go of that left foot, try not to let it drop. So let go, bring the knee back as you lower the right hand down, left hand onto the hips coming into Adha Chandrasana. So the left leg firmly working as if it were standing on the ground, flex the foot, lift the kneecap. This time the left shoulder draws back, the right shoulder forward. Find that stability in the right leg. One breath. On your next exhale, start to bend into the right knee. Bring your left hand to your hip as you step back with control. Coming up, warrior two. Reset here. Find the integrity in the posture. Firmly pressing into the outer edge of the left foot as you send the right knee forward above the ankle. Arms active tricep and bicep gripping the bone. Imagine that you're being pulled either side, your hands spreading apart. Take one deep inhale. On an exhale, we're gonna bend into that left leg, coming into Skandasana on the left side. In one movement, coming back up, warrior two, pivot the left heel back as you do that. It's gonna take a bit of practice, but you'll find the rhythm in this movement. Let's do that two more times. Skandasana on the back leg, warrior two, pivot the heel. See if you can find the integrity of the posture almost immediately. Skandasana, warrior two, pivot the heel. Find the depth of the posture. Nice work, one more time at the back, Skandasana. This time, we're gonna bend into extended, revolved extended side angle. So plant your left hand on the inside of the right foot, pivot onto the toes of the left foot, right arm to the sky. Lift the kneecap of the back leg, firming the quad, open the torso. From here, place the right hand on the hip, pivot onto the blade of the left foot, stack the right foot on top of the left, Vashistasana. From here, we're gonna add in some side body reps. So lower the hips down to the mat, pulse it up all the way for one, down to the mat, Two, really intense on the side body here. Three, four, five, six, seven, a bit more speed. Eight, nine, challenges your balance too. Ten, plant the right hand down. Make your way through your vinyasa. Upward facing dog and downward facing dog. Let's do the opposite side. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, left knee to left tricep. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, left knee, left tricep. Really press the ground away. Keep the heel close to the thigh. Inhale. Exhale, knee to nose. Step the foot between the hands. Back foot down to 45 degrees. Warrior one. A lot more open on this side. Firmly pressing into the outer blade of the right foot as the hips square forward. Bring the arms out to the side like wings as you straighten the front foot. Readjust if you need to. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, bring your right hand to the outer edge of the left foot. Parvrita Chukonasana, revolve triangle pose. 
firmly pressing into the outer edge of the, of the right foot, just like you were in Warrior One. Lift the kneecap of the left leg. Draw the left shoulder back, right shoulder forward. Chest lifting to help create extension in the side body. Crown of the head forward. Gaze forward, start to bend into the left knee as you step the right foot up and bring the right hand forward into revolved half moon. Working that back leg. Lift the kneecap of the back leg. Flex the foot as you open the chest even more. Take an inhale here. Exhale, work the leg. Can you lift it a little bit higher? Inhale. In one smooth motion, start to bend the right knee into the chest, coming up to standing. Left hand to the outer edge of the right foot for revolved hand to foot pose. This one's tough. Once you've got your balance, you can work to straighten the standing leg. Draw your awareness into your right arm. Maybe you're looking at it. If you're not, it's still there, so work it. Grip the muscle to the bone. Release the right foot. Don't let it collapse. Send it back, right hand to the right hip. Lowering down Adha Chandrasana. From here, right hand to the ceiling. Work the back foot. So flex the right foot by drawing the toes towards the shin. Lift the kneecap of the left foot. Right shoulder back, left shoulder forward. One breath here. Nice and slow on this first side. Bend into the left leg as you step back. Warrior two. Find the depth of the posture immediately. Settle in here, guys. There's no rush. That's what the second round is for. It's important to find integrity, awareness, control, stability before we start moving. So lift the chest, reach the fingertips away from each other, sink a little deeper. Inhale. On an exhale, bring your hands into your heart center, sinking into the right leg. Skandasana. Coming back up, pivoting the right heel back, warrior two. Skandasana on the back. Warrior two. Skandasana on the back foot. Flex that left kneecap. Warrior two, pivoting. Last Skandasana here. In one controlled motion, bend into that front knee, place the right hand to the inside of the left foot, pivot onto the right toes, revolved extended side angle pose. Parvita Pajvakonasana. Open the chest, open the chest. That back leg as active as any of the other standing postures we've done. Nice work. From here, press firmly into the right hand as you roll onto the outer edge of the right foot, finding Vashistasana. Lower the right hip to the mat, and up for one, two, you can have the left hand on the hip, that's easier, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, plant the hand, make your way through your vinyasa, upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. Reset here, a little break guys. Deep inhale through the nose. Exhale, release it out. <sighs> We're gonna make our way through that same sequence, this time about one breath per movement, moving a bit faster. So inhale the right leg high into the sky. Exhale, knee to right tricep. Inhale, exhale, knee to right tricep. One more time, inhale, knee to right tricep. Inhale it high, exhale, knee to nose, step the foot between the hands, drop the back foot down, warrior one. Reset here just for one breath. In one motion, straighten the front leg as you revolve round for Parvita Trikonasana, revolve triangle pose. Inhale, gaze forward, bend into the front leg, coming up, revolved, half moon. Back leg active, don't forget the integrity we built on that first round. Take an inhale. On an exhale, bend into the right knee, coming round for revolved hand to foot pose. 
Nice work. One breath, inhale. Exhale, release the foot, coming down through Adha Chandrasana, half moon. One breath here. Open the chest, work the legs, bend into the front knee, coming up, warrior two, readjust if you need to. Exhale, sinking deeper. One breath. On your next inhale, coming down to Skandasana on the left side, and back up, warrior two. That pivoting motion of the heel should be coming sick in nature now. Skandasana, warrior two, working those hips. Skandasana, warrior two. Last Skandasana here. One motion, left hand to the inside of the right foot, pivoting onto the left toes. Revolved extended side angle. Press firmly into the left hand as you make your way into Vashisthasana, lowering the hips down. And up for one, down, up for two, three. Think of lifting the hips as high as you can. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Plant the right hand. Make your way through your vinyasa. Nice work, guys. A lot quicker when we move fast. It's important not to lose that integrity of the poses though. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, left knee to left tricep. Inhale, exhale, left knee to left tricep. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, left knee, left tricep. One more time, inhale. Exhale, left knee to nose. Step the foot between the hand. Warrior one. Take an inhale. In one motion, right hand to the outside of the right foot, of the left foot, sorry. Revolved triangle pose. Kneecaps lifting. Take an inhale. Gaze forward, bend into the left knee, coming up. Revolved half moon. Don't move until you find the pose. There's no rush. Bend into the left knee, coming up. Revolved. Hand to foot. Release the foot. Coming back through Adha Chandrasana. A little bit shaky here. That's good. It means you're working. Those hips are becoming stable. Hand on the hip, bending to the left leg. Warrior two. Find the depth here. Legs working, don't forget about that back hand. What's it doing? Muscles gripping to the bones. Sinking back, skandhasana on the back leg. One motion, warrior two. Skandhasana. Warrior two. Skandhasana. Warrior two. Last one, skandhasana. Enjoy the stretch. And bring your right hand to the inside of the left foot. Revolved extended side angle. Each of these stretches are individual in nature. They all work different muscles. But when we bring them together, it should feel seamless. So step the left foot on top of the right. Vashisthasana, lower the right hip down. And up for one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Plant the left hand. Last vinyasa. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. No break here. Gaze between the hands. Bend the knees. Step or jump. Landing the feet on the outsides of the hands. Bring your hands into Malasana or a yogi squat. We're going to spend a couple of minutes having a bit of free play time. So this is an opportunity for you to work on your arm balances, your crow pose, handstand maybe, whatever you like and whatever you want to work on. I'll talk us through a bit of crow pose technique. We'll spend a couple of minutes playing and then we'll jump straight into some other work. So if you're going to play with crow pose, Let's start by placing the hands 
about shoulder width apart with the index fingers facing forward and set yourself up bringing your knees as high into the armpits or the triceps as you can and bring the weight into the hands I'm going to work with straight arm crow which is a little bit more challenging so have a play and enjoy yourselves bring your knees as high into the armpits as you can lifting up maybe coming through handstand and coming back down lowering to crow have a play from crow pose maybe you want to shoot it back to chaturanga upward facing dog down dog jump forward try that a couple times once you're ready we'll all meet on our backs hugging the knees into the chest we're going to do some core work just a couple of exercises it's important to spend some time in each class to develop the abdominals particularly if you're working on the arm balances transitions from crow to handstand having a strong core will make those movements easier and more accessible so bring the legs straight toes to the ceiling lift the chest off the ground make this interlaced Kali Mudra with the fingers and we're going to lower the left leg down pulsing over to the left for one two three four five six work the legs seven eight nine ten bring the left leg up to meet the right this time pulsing fingers towards the toes for one two three four five six seven eight nine ten lower the right leg down pulsing to the right this time one two three four five six seven eight nine ten hug the knees into the chest little break here we won't waste any time legs straight this time we're going to do some pulse ups so the chest lifts off the ground have the hands alongside your waist and we're going to lift the feet to the ceiling lifting the hips off the ground if your legs come back towards your face you're not going to get as much out of the exercise so try and keep the feet directly above the hips pulsing up for one two use the core three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three four five six seven eight nine ten hug the knees in you guys worked hard take a deep inhale together exhale release it out into the core <sighs> and release the feet down to the mat the hard work is over and we'll spend a bit of time doing some static stretching before quieting down into Shavasana so if you have your strap handy grab that now or a towel something that allows you to um, extend the reach of your arms bring the right knee into the chest lie the left leg along the mat place the strap over the ball of the right foot and find your depth here so that might be 90 degrees with the ankle directly over the hips you'll start to feel it in the hamstring hold onto the strap into the right hand bring the left hand out to the side and allow the foot to move over to the right Supta Parangastasana 2 find the depth of the stretch here flex the left foot allowing you to deepen into the stretch these static stretches are a perfect way to complement the more dynamic stretches that we've been doing in the flow sequence if you didn't already notice this position here is Adha, Chandra Adha Chandrasana or half moon but we're doing it on our backs this time same position just held from a different placement so use this as a way to improve your standing postures two controlled breaths 
draw the toes towards the ear. Lift the kneecap of both legs, grip the quads. Don't forget about that left foot. Inhale back up through center. Take the strap in your left hand, lie the right arm along the ground, and exhale, allow that left leg to come over to the left. Flex the left foot, flex the right foot. Both legs active. This is our revolved hand to foot pose that we included in our sequence. So, observe what sensations you feel here on the ground and carry that into your practice when you're doing it standing. You'll be surprised about what you can learn. Deep inhale. Controlled exhale, find the maximum depth of the stretch. Maybe you don't even need the strap here. I like to use a strap because I feel like it takes the ego out. It allows me to study my body, study my mind without falling in, into that egotistical realm where you're more concerned about bringing your hand to your foot. Inhale that leg back up to center, release the strap, shake it out, and lie your right leg down. Place a strap over the ball of the left foot, coming up, finding that hamstring stretch. So from here with the strap over the left foot, allow that left foot to gently move its way over to the left, right, uh, right arm out to the right. Keep active in that right foot. Right kneecap lifting, quad active. Left kneecap gripping tight to protect the leg. Find your depth here. So deep inhale, breathe into the right so as you might feel a bit of tension here. This is our Ardha Chandrasana. What thoughts are surfacing? What sensations? Where do you feel the tightness? Two deep breaths. Play around with pointing, flexing. See what feels good for you. Inhale back through center. Place the strap into your right hand. Left arm lies along the ground. Left leg makes its way over to the right. Supta Padangustasana three. Variation of revolved hand to foot. For a second I want you to imagine that you're doing this posture standing up. Your right foot is on the ground, your left foot's in the air. What do you feel? What difference would it be? What, what changes would you make? That right leg would be firm and active. Two deep breaths here. Allow this pose to take you inward, studying your breath, your mind, your body. One more breath. Inhale the left leg back up to 90 degrees. Have one last nice stretch here and then release the strap off the foot. Shake the legs out. And we'll make our way into Shavasana. So place the right foot to the corner of the mat and then followed by the left. Make yourself comfortable. Avoid touching any props. Try and allow your mind to quieten, scanning through the body. What have you learnt today? What have your muscles experienced? And in addition to the sensations of the body, draw your awareness to the sensations of the mind. What thoughts came up in today's practice? The art of yoga is being able to focus so intensely on the asana, on the pose, that you are able to free your mind of the distractions of the outside world. And to put that into practical terms, 
if you were totally concentrated on a stretch, on the hamstring stretching and the alignment of a posture, you won't be thinking about that coffee that you're going to have after class or that fight you were in with your friend, the stresses of work. You'll be so focused on the posture that everything else melts away and you're truly in the moment. Take one deep breath in through the nose and surrender your thoughts and your body for Shavasana. Stay in Shavasana for as long as you would like. It'll do a world of good for your body and your mind. Thank you for allowing me to share my practice with you today. I look forward to practicing with you next time. Namaste.